didn't um, uh, talk further, uh, we have already seen a good uh, clinical exam and radiological investigation. We will go on to uh, look at patellofemoral joint and instability. Now, as you know, in uh, patellofemoral joint is not very well understood and in some uh, parts uh, the people have difficulty and so more so on patellofemoral instability. So, uh, can you hear me? Yes, sir, you can go ahead. My slide is to go next. Okay, yes. I'll have to do it from here. So, uh, patellar instability um, by definition is partial or complete loss of uh, congruity of the articular surface of patella in relation to femoral trochlea. We tend to see a spectrum of this problem starting from mild subluxation to a complete dislocation of petla, which we commonly see in our practice with uh, female teen uh, presenting to us with uh, different symptoms. Commonly pain, sometimes lack of confidence in the knee. Sometimes they come with sudden fall or sudden uh, give of the knee with no reason. Some will complain of some clicking sound in the joint or some abnormal feeling in their kneecap and rarely with swelling. With some of the athletes, we find they have difficulty in changing the direction or in cutting a kind of an activity. When these symptoms are there, and especially in teenagers and young population, uh, we should have high index of suspicion because that's where we'll be able to pick up the patellofemoral instability. Now, once we have a, a index of suspicion and we are suspecting, we need to know where it is coming from. So what could be the reason for this instability? So there comes the etiology. So for etiological point of view, we can divide instability into two kinds. One is traumatic, where there has been an injury which results in disruption of the medial structures like MPFL and tissues, which results in uh, patella subluxating or dislocating. And the other group is atraumatic. In atraumatic group, we have general limb malalignment like femoral tibial torsion problem or genu valgus, or uh, we could have local knee pathology inside the knee which are causing uh, patella to dislocate. We will investigate this local knee pathology in a little more uh, in a minute. And then there is a group which is called hepatoid dislocation where the uh, dislocation of petla starts very early and patient sometimes himself or herself is not aware. And with each flexion of the joint, petla dislocates. That's a completely different kind of a problem. So looking at the knee joint pathology proper, there could be soft tissue problem like hyperlaxity of the soft tissue with the high Betten score, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, connective tissue disorder like annular donlus or Marfan syndrome, or maybe tight lateral structures which are pulling the petla. Also on the structural side, the bony side, we have uh, uh, problems in the bone which are more relevant to us because this is what we can go correct and help the patient to reduce the instability. So commonest is the high riding petla, petla alta is called, and uh, we have certain tests which we look at. Tibial tubercle malalignment, it is placed externally or uh, a bad position which is pulling the petla out and then uh, dysplasia or hypoplasia of trochlea and uh, petella. So with this information uh, with us, now we are trying to look uh, for what is the cause of this problem. As very nicely illustrated by Dr. Deep, uh, Dr. Uh, Deepak Joshi, that we need to take a detailed history. So I'll not go into that, but what is important is to ascertain whether it is traumatic or not. So we inquire the patient whether there was a history of trauma. If it was, then we try to go into a little more details to find out how it happened to understand the extent of injury and also not to miss the other ligaments or other tissues that can be injured as well. Also, when did the index dislocation happen? How long gives us a chronicity, how often it has happened? That gives us the idea of how much problem the patient is having. Then we move down to clinical examination. As the examination has been dealt in details, I'll just go through with one or two uh, main uh, clinical examination that has done for petlar instability. So the examination starts from the very, uh, very beginning as the patient enters the clinic, we look at the gait of the patient, inspection from front, sides, and the back. And in this situation, we also do in a sitting and a standing position. So if you look at this, you can start noticing there is a significant genu valgum, which will be putting uh, petal as a disadvantage, uh, which is causing the issue. Also, if you see squinting of petella, then that means there is some rotational problem of the femur or of the tibia, more often the femur. And uh, if on sitting position, we see that uh, the uh, foot is uh, not uh, in the correct angle, that shows that there is uh, a tibial rotation problem. And then foot thigh angle and other uh, mentioned examination have to be carried out along with uh, hip movements to ascertain what is 
the problem and how much and where is the problem uh, outside the knee. Now then we move down to the knee joint proper. Here, as it been mentioned earlier, Q angle is, um, is to be measured. And as somebody had asked how to measure the Q angle, this is how it is. As Dr. Basin was pointing out, we go from the iliac crest and the first inferior most point felt there or from the inguinal ligament is the ASIS. Then we look at the center of the petula and then the center of tibial tuberosity and the line joining the first two and the second two point, the angle formed is generally 14 to 17 degrees. Uh, to my, uh, most of the time we do it in near extension position because if it is flexed a little more, then the petula starts engaging and it may reduce the Q angle because the petula is engaged. If it is more than 18 degrees, it suggests that there is a lateral vector which is pushing the petla out and it may be uh, prone to instability. And this is more, than, more often than not because of malposition tibial tuberosity, which is uh, in the external position, which might need correcting. Then we go down to see the uh, 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 palpate, the, uh, the knee joint, and we look for the petla glide. Normal petla, if you glide, it goes till two quadrants laterally. If it goes more than two quadrants, then it is lax petula. And if it moves more than three, that means there is an instability there. If we think of instability, then we go for apprehension test. As was mentioned earlier, the knee is kept at 30 degrees of flexion. Uh, generally, we do that by asking the patient to put the, uh, the involved knee over the normal knee and it automatically bends at 30 degrees. And then we give a gentle push as is seen here to the petula laterally. And if uh, there is instability and petula starts to subluxate, the patient suddenly holds your hand or tries to extend the knee so that uh, the petula can be saved from dislocating. And that's positive apprehension test. Then we also look for the lateral uh, uh, structure tightness by petular tilt. We try to uh, feel for the lateral border of petula, as you can see here, and insinuate a finger. If we are not able to feel the lateral border, that means the lateral structures are tight and we have to uh, keep that in mind. Then lastly, we look at the petular tracking, as was mentioned. There are two different uh, uh, tracking that you can see here from full extension to full flexion. You look at the movement as to when does it dislocate or moves abnormally zero to 30 degrees or 30 to 60 degrees or beyond 60 degrees. Generally, as was mentioned, J sign in last 30 degree of extension, the petla suddenly moves outward and in a J fashion. And that is why it is called J sign. Now this gives us an idea of uh, some pathology as to where it is happening and how uh, we would want to address it. With this all information, now we want to confirm what is there in our, in our mind, what we are suspecting is the prime pathology, which is causing instability. So we go down for in, in imaging. The first thing is radiology and X-ray, the plane AP weight bearing, lateral, and then skyline view. And uh, AP view generally in standing position gives the um, uh, alignment of the knee. And if there is any alignment issue, you get a scanogram done to check for the angles which are off and then how much is the deformity where, whether lower end of femur, or upper end of tibia, and what angles they can be calculated. If there is alignment issue of torsion of the femur above and below, then we do the CT scans and we find out the femoral antiversion angle. And if it's more than 14 degrees, definitely it is uh, abnormal. Similarly, the transmalular axis of tibia compared superimposed on transcondylar axis, if it is more than 20 degrees, that means there is external torsion of tibia that has to be kept in mind and worked up to address this first then before we go to the local knee pathology. Now, when we look at local knee pathology, more information is got from the lateral view and from the uh, skyline view, because these are the two views which actually show your petlofemoral joint very nicely. AP view, it is actually shadowed behind tibia and femur. So we concentrate on first the uh, uh, skyline view. Here, we calculate the sulcus angle from the deepest point of the trochlea. Two lines are drawn on either side of the trochlea uh, facets and the angle is generally less than 144. If it is more than 144, as you see in this case, it shows a dysplastic trochlea and this can easily help the petula to dislocate and move abnormally. Also for those people who have a very subtle uh, lateral subluxation, we do congruence angle bisecting the sulcus and then drawing a line from the lowermost part of petula. And if it is, this angle is more than uh, 14 degrees that shows that there is some lateral subluxation. So this is for very subtle subluxation to be picked up uh, on x-rays. Then in the lateral view, the first thing, so we did with the axillary view, 
uh, the sorry skyline view and now we are coming to uh, lateral view in lateral view we want to look at petla first of all the height of petla the petla altar there are different indices basically we are trying to look at the length of the articular cartilage of petla and the height of this articular cartilage from the tibial uh, uh, fibrosity or tibial articular surfaces depending on which index you take in san salvati uh, more than 1.2 shows it is petla alta which is our area of interest blackburn peel is slightly different it takes uh, the articular surface rather than whole length of petla and if it is more than one again it signifies petla alta while cato duchamp index takes the petlar articular surface plus just the height of the petlar um, uh, uh, articular surface from the uh, or the distance of the uh, articular surface from the upper end of tibia and this of uh, 1.3 plus actually signifies petlar alta so if there is petlar alta then this is another uh, sign which tells us that uh, petlar could be unstable then in lateral view one more thing which is important and this is what generally people miss is to also look at trochlear dysplasia so here we have three lines this is one line uh, signifying the femoral condyle of uh, of uh, uh, femur and for this you have to take a lateral view where the two condyles are almost superimposed so first line is the femoral condyle the second line is the trochlear groove now if you look at these two lines they never meet and the third line is the anterior cortex of the femur so they do not move, uh, meet and this is the normal uh, uh, trochlear groove but when you have an abnormal trochlear groove this is what happens this is the femoral uh, condylar line and just see what happens to the uh, trochlear line it comes on and then anteriorly it touches and then crosses over if you extend it beyond the um, condylar shadow and this is the what we call as classical crossover sign and if crossing over sign is positive you can safely say that there is a petlar dysplasia what kind then you have to go in details there are four kinds of dujor i think they are out of the scope but if you are able to pick up the uh, uh, crossover sign we have done the job then looking at the mri it gives a soft tissue uh, idea as to what it is doing with the mpfl this is the normal looking retinaculae and here you can see detachment from the femoral side and here you can see the edema and injury on the patellar side also if it is a chronically dislocated patella like this see how stretched out and dysfunctional mpfl can get so this not only gives us the soft tissue but also the same thing that we were talking about uh, uh, trochlear dysplasia you can see the different morphology of uh, of uh, femur in mri itself along with the edema and other things that dr dhananjay sabat just now very elegantly uh showed us also important information that we get if you are discussing about uh, this thing just to confirm our apprehension of uh, abnormal position or tibial tubercle uh, we do tttg distance this is a distance from uh, a point from the deepest point of the trochlear groove uh, drawn a perpendicular to a line joining the uh, posterior part of the femoral condyle uh, and the second point is on this superimposed tibial tuberosity the central and the most prominent point and then draw a perpendicular here and the distance between the two is called tttg distance as you can see in this case it is increased if it is more than 15 mm it is suggestive of a problem and if it is more than 20 mm then it is almost uh, confirmatory that the tibial tubercle is malpositioned similarly uh, scan ct scans can also be used but since there is a exposure radiation and we get most of the information from mri so these are not uh, used they are only used in uh, cases where we have either bilateral problem or we have a torsional issue that's when we use ct scan otherwise rest all investigations like x ray and mri can give us most of the information now the management all the acute patellar dislocation are generally managed first time uh, by rice uh, as we all know the only caveat to that is if you see a small bony spicule in the x ray that shows osteocartilage uh, osteoarticular uh, uh, chunk or you see a cartilage big cartilage chunk on mri that is the indication to do arthroscopy and then go and fix this fragment back into the place when we come down to treatment of uh, genu uh, from uh, patellar instability we first correct the external malalignment the uh, alignment of the limb torsion or uh, genu varus valgus this has to be corrected first and then we come to the knee joint proper 
Now, in knee joint proper, we look at the position at which the patella dislocate. So let's take first zero to 30 degrees. If it dislocates, every time patella dislocates, definitely MPFL gets the injury and it is torn. But along with that, if all the other indices, the patella is not high, it's not alta, or the TTT distance is fine, that means there's no abnormality of tibial tubercle, or the trochlear groove is in normal position, it's not hypoplastic, then only the MPFL is injured. That means it is most likely traumatic. And here alone doing an MPFL reconstruction, the different kinds of graft and different types of techniques are there will suffice uh, and do the job. But more than often, it is not just MPFL. There are other indices which are out of place like TTTG is positive. That means the tibial tubercle is lateralized or the CD index is high. That means the patella is high. In this case, along with the MPFL reconstruction, you have to do a tibial tubercle osteotomy and then move it into correct place, which is medialization to correct the TTTG distance and distalization based on how high is the patella and then fix it with help of screw as you see in this picture. So a modified Elm Street triliad kind of a procedure is required. While uh, if the patient, patient is skeletally immature, you want to buy time, you could use some soft tissue procedures as a temporizing procedures like galaxies or rocks called weight, where just you shift some part of the patellar tendon. If the dislocation is happening between 30 to 60 degrees, then have a very high suspicion of trochlear hypoplasia or dysplasia. Look at your CT scan, MRI, or X-rays carefully. Along with the other parameters, trochlea has to be screened very, very carefully. And if it is found to be the culprit, then you need to do a secondary procedure like trochleoplasty, wherein can you see this, how shallow is the sulcus angle here? This is improved by removing the bone under the, patellar, uh, the uh, trochlear facet. And then the trochlea is broken and depressed to uh, then fixed uh, with different ways and then you can improve the sulcus angle that is making the trochlear groove deeper to allow petlas to stay in the trochlear groove. So in the end, if we look at the instability overall, MPFL, petla, alta, uh, TTT distance, that means abnormal place, tibial tubercle and trochlear dysplasia have a major role to play. Patellar tilt on its own, which signifies tight lateral structures, uh, does not fit in fully into a primary pathology. Generally, it is secondary to the other problems. Uh, as a result, uh, what is now uh, thought uh, uh, in the patellofemoral circles is that isolated uh, lateral release uh, to be discouraged or done um, less often. It is generally done as a um, adjunct procedure. Think of trochlear hypoplasia. Look for hypoplasia because this is the commonest reason why the procedure and things fail because we fail to recognize hypoplasia. And MPFL is almost part and parcel of any petlofemoral pathology um, uh, correction. It is always an addition to that. So with this, you. I wish to thank all for patient sharing. And I come to...